Hiya. Um, just thought I'd do a little, little uh, YouTube clip um, about damp proofing. I, I thought we'd got to the point in our knowledge of period properties, you know, that it did in um, it, general knowledge of period properties, that, um, you know, the whole damp proofing game was up. You know, it, it was the end because, you know, uh, the damp proofers have been rumbled. The builders are staying away from peer read properties, but but no, no, actually, au contraire, um, it's just as bad as ever. Um, talking to uh, talking to a guy just three or four doors down, and um, and he he asked me what I was doing, and I told him I was applying lime mortuary. So all right, okay, he said yeah, we've had, we've just had our cottage damp proof, and I thought what? I said what have they done? And he said I put a solid floor in, you know, it's, it was all cement, put you know about six inches of cement. I thought, oh god, right, and um, and of course rendering all the, all the way up the inside, gypsum plastering on top of that, um, cement pointing on the outside, you know. And I said, well, look, paradoxically, he said, cost us a lot of money. And I said, well, yeah, par paradoxically, I said, damp proofing actually leads leads to damp. And he said, what? And I said, damp proofing actually leads to damp. So I explained to him how you've actually got to open the house up. Um, effectively, what you're doing is you're opening it up to moisture because that's what you want. You don't want the moisture staying in one place, you want it moving through the capillaries in your lime mortar. It's a very, very simple science, but for some reason surveyors, and the reason why I'm annoyed about this, right, is because the surveyor recommended a builder. Would you believe it, right? In this day and age, honestly, I'm almost at the point now where if someone says, you know, I'm a surveyor, they've got the, they've got the names RCIS, um, be, 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 uh, um, after, after their name I'm thinking oh god well we're in trouble here because the problem is you know although there are, there are, there are, there are some good quality surveying um, qualifications out there the content of some of the modules is and excuse my language absolutely piss poor because at the end of the day surveyors should at least understand the, the bare bones the bare basics of how an old property like like these work mechanically they just don't they're still recommending damp proofing and i mean the very fact that this surveyor recommended a, a builder tells you everything um but you know i mean one of the things that has annoyed me on this job is the fact that some that you know people are just people are getting ripped off in different ways now you know previously it was the rent to kill copper strip around the base of the property and here's one here's one that rent to kill um prepared earlier there you, there you go. That somehow magically is going to stop damp, right? And also what they've done, and it just, it's absolutely, it's, it should be laudable, but it's not, it's laughable. You see that, right? That's a hole in the stone there. And that is to inject the injectable chemical damp proof co uh, course. Yep, by simply drilling some holes in the base of your property, it's really easy for the damp proof proper, uh, the damp proof volleys to rip you off. I mean, sorry, sorry to um, to um, to stop the damp penetrating. Uh, it's, it's a Freudian slip there, I'm sure. Um, and there it is again, right? Heritage House. Absolutely hate all this kind of stuff because it really is. It's snake oil, um, and it's been sold to unsuspecting, ignorant homeowners. Um, not being too scathing there, but you know, people really need to wake up to the rip-off, which is the damp proof industry. The dotting, the dabbing, um, the chemical damp proof courses, the don't worry, we'll control the damp. Of course they will, they'll cement the whole bloody lot in. Right, so there you go, there's your holes, because that's obviously how you inject your temp chemical damp proof course. That there is copper strip. It's just irritating because I've got to I've got to rip the bloody stuff out. There's all your cement, waterproofing everything. Right, and here's what I'm doing: getting the bloody stuff out. Right, this is the lime. This is what's called a CL80, right, which is um, a, a high free lime content, quick lime, and uh, it. Um, 
Here's some I mixed a couple of days ago. See if it was cement, it would have just set solid. Um, so take all the old cement out and um, and the remnants of the uh, of the aged lime, and of course get rid of the copper strips because somehow magically, without any empirical evidence whatsoever, that was sold to people. And who buy? Let's have a look. Yep, named and shamed. Rent a kill, right? My advice to rent a kill is keep killing the rodents and unblocking the drains because that's all you're good for. Don't try and damp proof a house unless you go on specialist lime and mortar courses or take some of my advice. That makes me sound really cocky, but it's bloody true, right? So, anyway, here's me on a Thursday afternoon having had no bloody sleep whatsoever no that's not that it's not that it's not that bad actually I'm trying to trying to get ready for my holidays and um so i'm doing as much work on this as i possibly can because i know i've got to leave it for a week you know uh anyway so what's happened on the inside is the damp wallies again had been at it all the way round the base I've just had to redo this in lime pussy because they've taken the plaster off. Right, they've probably had some flooding in the past. Some moisture's come up from the bottom. And uh, of course they've got on the phone damp proof agents, damp proof contractors, you know, and they've been in. They absolutely, they, they'll have absolutely ripped these poor people off. Right, so what I've had to do is I've had to strip all the damp control render. I love it, damp control. I've had to strip all the damp control render off the uh, off the base of the property uh, here, and we've got some uh, lovely porous. See this? This isn't going to set. That could sit there for a week and not set because that's proper lime, right? When you're listening to people talk about lime, understand this, right? Lime is like tea, tires places to go on holiday right there are many right don't just take the first um piece of advice about lime right because they could be talking about the citrus fruit that taught that fall out the trees for all you know right we're dealing with different compressive strengths um uh, limes which are originating from different rock formations limes which come from different countries from Portugal, from Germany, from France, from England. Um, some of them, some of them good, some of them not so good. I mean, you know, natural hydraulic lime, that's on the way out in many respects. And which, which is really irritating because, you know, we all got to know how to use it and how to use it pretty well because it was ushered in by, guess who? The conservation departments. Yeah, they welcomed it in with open arms, right? So now, now we're using less of it. That doesn't mean to say you shouldn't use it because there are some bloody damn good NHLs out there, but you've got to know the right ones to use. Otherwise, in some cases, you might as well just be putting cement on. I was watching a YouTube video the other day. This bloke's um, repointing the, uh, the gable end of a house in natural hydraulic lime five. In natural hydraulic lime Five, right? If I wanted to create sea defences, right, I'd be using natural hydraulic lime five. And not only was it natural hydraulic lime five, but it was natural hydraulic lime with a ridiculously low free lime content, 15%. That means all the rest of it, right, 85% of what came in that bag was just rubbish, right? Because it, it did used to be good lime, right? Started off as good lime. Right, but the longer they leave it in the kiln with impurities, the lower the free lime content. Right, so don't just go buy lime. Right, I'm going to do a YouTube video um, um, concerning the the, uh, the different free lime contents and compressive strengths. Um, I was trying to get uh, information out of Tarmac concerning their um, their free lime content and their compressive strength, but communication dried up because they did not want to reveal it. Right, why is this? Why is the lime industry unwilling to reveal the truth about natural hydraulic limes? 
Why do they only give compressive strength? I mean, some, like St. Astia, you'll get compressive strength rating after two years um, on the data sheets. Other data sheets, like Tarmac, um, you will not get any information whatsoever about free line content or compressive strength. You've got to email them or ring them up. And then, and then they're reticent about sharing that information with you. Why? Right? Um, anyway, so um, that's, that's my rant. Okay, so this is, going to be, this, is, this is going to be tied in with what's on the top there, right, is cement mortar. Right, I can leave that there. It's cement mortar topped up with chips and plaster. And I can leave that there, right, because it doesn't make any difference how much this place floods, right? Gravity will stop damp rising. You won't really get it going any higher than about a metre, right? So, you know, it's all right. Unless there's a dodgy, uh, dodgy gutter or um, some... Uh, an underground stream or um, what else would what else would create damp um, sort of round about shoulder height um, leaking leaking drains that's always a good one you know um, so um, so anyway so that's it so uh, the whole place is having to be redone but I mean what I can't believe is I had to take the copper strip off the base of, because they've gone around and done it on the inside and cemented the whole of the inside up. So they actually, you know, by paradoxically, ironically, um, by trying to stop damp, they created damp, you know, which, I mean, it's the, it's great for me because I've got work coming out of my ears. I can't, I, I mean, I have to turn people down because there's just, um, uh, there's just too much of this. You know, the builders in the eighties never did the, uh, did the clients a favor, but they did, they did us a massive solid because we're, we'll never be out of work because of the damage they've done to these houses, you know, but do yourselves a favor. Don't treat, you know, don't treat everything a surveyor says as, 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 as truth, right? Take it with a pinch of salt to begin with and ask them questions. You know, if they're coming up with brilliant ideas about damp proofing, I mean, you know, just don't trust them. You can't, you know, there's all that there used to be this, um, well, there still is, this thing about uh, dodgy builders but you've got to look at the building trade as a whole right look at architects look at surveyors look at the suppliers look at the manufacturers and look at your look at your fellows who turn up in the transit vans as well you know do they know their stuff as well you know how much do people actually know how much have they read into their subjects you know do they inhabit their subjects you know have they become the subject as bruce lee would say and on that bombshell right have a nice day all right ta -ra.